You're listening to the Joy of Champagne podcast, your guide to the world of sparkling wines. And now your host, Dennis Byram. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Joy of Champagne. I'm your host, Dennis Bayer. This episode, we'll be talking about pairing sparkling wines with food. We will talk about what good pairings are and why are they so good with sparkling wines. And we'll also focus on the different types of sparkling wines and how they pair with a different array of foods within their rights. Before starting to give specific examples for dishes to pair with, our favorite sparkling wines we need first to understand why sparkling wines are one of the most food-friendly wines ever in the entire world. And this is a common point of all sparkling wines, no matter where they are from. This is because sparkling wines all have a good, if not most of the time, an elevated level of acidity that ensures that they are always fresh not to mention the refreshing carbon dioxide bubbles inside as well. And because of this, they also go well with a common type of food. Can you guess what it is? If you've said fried foods, you are correct. Fried foods, pretty much no matter what they are, as long as they're fried, are the greatest friend of all sparkling wines. We can even go as far as saying it's a match made in heaven. But why? Because it's all about the game and the dance between two tastes, acid and fat. Fried foods all have a high amount of fat naturally, and we can feel the oil in our mouth when we eat them. They coat our palate and our tongues. It's a very comforting sensation, which is why we love fatty foods. But when you wash it down with something nice and fresh, or in other words, acidic, It feels even more satisfying, because once the oil is washed away from our palate, we are ready for more. And with the tartness of the wine, we start salivating more as well, which makes us even hungrier and eventually leads us to take another bite as we crave more and more of it with each bite and each sip. This is the same reason why fatty peanut butter pairs heavenly with tart strawberry jam and oily potato chips pair perfectly with sharp tart vinegar. It is the same logic. So my all-time favorite pairings for champagne is nicely salted potato chips or crisps. So you can virtually pair any sparkling wine with any fried food and the result will be most likely very delicious. So let's start talking about champagne first. Just like any other sparkling wine, champagne can and will go with any other fried and fatty food. But since champagne sees long aging on the lees, which gives it a creamy texture and toasty taste, it does go beautifully with roasted chicken and other game meats, cream-based soups and sauces as well. So do not feel obliged to pair a bottle of red wine with your Christmas turkey dinner. A bottle of nice, full-bodied champagne will pair just as beautifully. Speaking of full-bodied champagne, another champion with food is rosé or pink champagne. Rosé champagne can go with a wider array of foods as it has the body and even in some instances, some tannins to stand up to some meats like cured meats such as pastrami or salami. Other champagne method sparkling wines like Cava or Franciacorta will have similar flavor profiles, albeit less intense and less complex. So think of them as more affordable alternatives to champagne. That being said, especially considering Franciacorta and other champagne method wines that indicate on the label, it can be just as superior or even more superior than champagne in some instances. So use this as a rule of thumb if you're shopping for widely produced wines, let's say from supermarkets in the range of $15 to $30. But let's face it, champagne can be a bit hard on our wallet to have all the time. So what about Prosecco and Cremant? Whenever pairing with Prosecco, it should be kept in mind that it's much lighter than champagne. 
so the foods to pair with should also be lighter as a general rule. Cremants are also the same. They are delicate and floral, but tend to have a bit more body than Prosecco in general, because they are made in the bottle, either by ancestral or champagne method. I love pairing light starters and canapes with these wines, and I also find them perfectly pair with light salads. By light, I mean simple salads without overly creamy dressings, perhaps at most a Caesar or a potato salad. But I'm talking more aromatic and delicate salads items like uh, fresh herbs and crispy greens. For appetizers and canapes, I think ones made with fresh cheeses and cream work very nice. Something like ricotta or cottage cheese, for example, or creme fraiche or sour cream as well as yogurt. These are fresh dairy products, so they blend in with the freshness of the Prosecco beautifully, as well as the wine cutting the fattiness and the creaminess of the cheeses with its acidity. So you can easily pair light pasta dishes with Prosecco and Cremant like pasta primavera or any other vegetable dishes like ratatouille. Keep in mind some ingredients for these dishes would not be in season during winter time though. And then there are sparkling wines that are sweet. Who doesn't like some sweetness with some fizz after all? The most popular and widely available sweet sparkling wines are Asti Spumante and Moscato d'Asti. They are almost identical, except the latter is less fizzy and not as bubbly as the Spumante. So they come in regular wine bottles with screw-top closures. These wines are often demonized by so-called connoisseurs of wine because of their sweetness and their simplicity, but that is nonsense. Because these wines are very joyful aromatically, because Muscat, the grape used to make these wines, is already very aromatic by itself. And no one should ever feel guilty for drinking Moscato d'Asti or Asti Spumante. These wines aren't very crazy in acidity, but have just enough that it balances the sweetness of the wine. The most perfect pairing for these wines is actually dessert. You might say that this is going a bit overboard by pairing sweet with sweet, but although it seems counterintuitive, it works the best. As you surely don't want to pair something that's not strong or sweet enough with these wines. And in fact, when sweet and sweet is paired together, they do not overpower each other, but rather blend in and accompany each other. So Moscatos go deliciously with fruitcakes or tarts, cheesecakes with cream and white chocolate, for example. Or the classic pairing for these wines would be the famous Italian dried fruit breads called panettone. You can find them everywhere, especially this time of the year. Another personal favorite of mine with sweet moscato is tiramisu. It's such a satisfactory pairing and I recommend everyone to give it a try. Chances are you'll probably be hooked. So, these are a few classic examples and some personal favorites of mine to pair with sparkling wines. But this is an endless subject that I can continue rambling on for hours. So, before wrapping up, I'm going to share a simple rule of thumb to use when in doubt what to pair with any wine or food. Simply use the rule of thumb of what grows together, goes together. It's one of the better rules you can use whenever you're confused. Because in Europe, almost all wines are made to go with the local cuisine. Example to this would be cava with paella or tapas, items like croquetas or tortillas. Or champagne with French cheese or prosecco with prosciutto. And don't forget, there may be rules for balanced pairings between food and wine. But there are just as many exceptions as well. So don't be afraid to experiment and try new pairings. That's the whole fun of pairing wine and food anyway. What are your favorite sparkling wine and food pairings? Do you have any seasonal pairings that you love with sparkling wines? Share your thoughts with us by shooting us an email at hello at joyofchampagne.com. Thank you for listening and until next time, stay bubbly. Before we end, a word from our sponsors. 
This episode of the Joy of Champagne podcast was brought to you by The Excelsior by Dukes, one of the world's finest champagne flutes. 10.7 inches tall with a 10 ounce capacity. Handcrafted and mouth blown, lead free crystal glass. Find out more at clubdukes.co. That's spelled C L U B D U X dot C O. Because there are some things man can make better than any machine. Thanks for listening to the Joy of Champagne podcast, your guide to the world of sparkling wines. We hope you join us on the next episode. In the meantime, feel free to visit us at joyofchampagne.com or drop us an email at hello at joyofchampagne.com.